got some random nonsense on sale, stranger. Hello, I'm the Random Nonsense Merchant, and this is my beginner's guide for Wasted. This game is notorious for randomly killing you in various ways, and holding back many of the late game features until you've completed at least the first cooler. If you're watching this, I'm assuming you haven't got past Cooler CA1 and you want to see the rest of the game. In this guide I'll give you some basic survival tips, tell you what items are worth picking up, and explain how to beat some of the more difficult encounters. Yes, that includes the SOB Purifier. You start the game with Father's Rusty Pistol and two items of Waster's Rag Clothing. Replace these as early as possible with items dropped from early enemies. There's no real difference between the .9er and the D-Pistola, so you use whichever one you find first. The best armour in the early game is Cooler Armour, as it only takes one inventory slot and gives you 6 Tinkering Skill which lets you disable the gun traps and loot them for ammo. Until you find it, use whatever combination of armour gives you the best stats. If you don't find one inside a container, you should find and kill one of the Rotty Men, as they always wear Cooler Armour. If you want to save on pistol ammo, you should try to find a crowbar. On many rooms in the early game you'll encounter groups of brawler enemies who rush into melee range, and are therefore best killed with a crowbar to save ammo. Be careful from floor 4 onwards, as there will be raider sprayers equipped with doozies who will devastate you before you can reach melee range. When you've managed to kill a raider sprayer, or just managed to find a doozy somewhere in a container, this should be your new standard weapon as they can be still used for single shots like a pistol, at the cost of accuracy. If you have some good items and want to store them, use the courier boxes which appear at the end of floors 3 and 6, or are just sometimes found randomly in various rooms. It's a good idea to purposefully grab lots of important items and bring them back to your house, so you can re-equip them onto your next character if you die. Items worth bringing back include D-Pistolas or point .9ers, doozies, crowbars, cooler armors, medicines, junk food, and liquid bread. Liquid bread is especially good as every two you find can be crafted into solid bread, which instantly heals 30 HP and is one of the best items in the game. Make as many of these as you can. Another good crafting recipe is leather cooler armour, which can be made from one cooler armour and one raider bruiser jacket, although it's not strictly necessary if you are having trouble finding the jackets. Navigation is tricky as a lot of runes look extremely similar, however there are a few things you can do to make sure you have a very high chance of finding the exit before the SOB shows up. One of the loading screens gives you the hint that the exit will never be hidden behind a locked door. This is very important to keep in mind as it means the most reliable way to reach the exit is never to go in any locked doors. You may think that you may miss out on better items this way, but the locked doors in the earlier levels rarely have anything that good in them anyway. If you think you'll need more time to get away from the SOB, you can leave a tripping hazard in the room where you spawned, as the SOB always starts in the same place. Later on you'll want to find the Chick Chick or Sod Off shotguns, the Emma Grand rifle and ammo for both. Tripping hazards are also worth collecting if you have enough space after disarming them. In the dormitories on floors 4 to 6, you can find rooms with bum bags, fanny packs, and side slung fanny packs, or sometimes enemies have those equipped. When you have all three inventory expansion items, you can hold 19 items, so they are worth getting. You can also find the incredibly rare Disc Joy music player that gives you another inventory slot, however you shouldn't rely on being able to find it. Since this game is a post-apocalyptic pub crawl, let's talk about the various types of drinks. The unmarked flask with the question mark symbol on them gives you random buzzes which could either be really good, really bad, or irrelevant. I would not recommend drinking these. One of them, the Half-Life Brew, makes your character only have 50 HP. If you're trying to live long enough to get some good items back to the house, this could make things more difficult. The glowing green bottles found in the same rooms as the regular courier boxes give hangovers with various effects. In the early game these are likely to be minor buffs, minor debuffs, or silly effects of no real significance. Compared to the unmarked flasks, these hangovers are much safer, and you can see their effects before you drink them. The glowing green bottles will also immediately send you back home when drunk, although it's not clear how your character manages to drunkenly walk back to the house without any incident. The final type of drink available are the cocktails at the bar at the Oni Express. These cost 30 TP each. You can either get Champagne which makes you deal 10% more damage, or Tough Keeler which increases your defence by 10%. I won't go into all the different combinations of mixers and preparations as they only give fairly minor buffs, so they're not important enough to explain here. 
On floor 7 you'll find the administrator's office where you can store items, learn a few plot details and open up the way to the boss room. Floors 8 to 10 feature the deadliest enemies yet, including SOB recruits, raider blasters and the super mutant like spewmen who have 50 HP and can only be taken down reliably with heavy rifles. These include the Emma Grand and the 16 which some SOB recruits have. I favour the Emma Grand over the 16 as it doesn't burn ammo quite as fast, but it has the disadvantage of not being able to reload mid-clip, which makes it somewhat more awkward to use. You'll also want to replace your doozies with the rat attack SMGs that are found here. If you're lucky enough to find a serviceman helmet, make sure to equip it as it gives plus 10 armour against headshots, which gives you amazing survivability. When you're assaulting these floors you want to collect the courier boxes to carry supplies which you can collect on floor 6. This way, if you happen to die earlier, you won't lose anything important. I recommend filling these boxes with medicines, solid bread, pistol and rifle ammo, and maybe a powerful gun you don't want to risk losing on the first six floors. You can place some spare ammo and medicines in the administrator's office itself, but don't leave yourself defenceless in the process. That is, unless you're resigned to losing your current character. In which case you can dump piles of ammo and supplies in the office for later runs. Eventually you'll have a good enough run to reach the end of floor 10, which has a row of drinks and a door to the floor 11 boss room. I won't spoil any of the boss fights in this video, but if you get to this point make sure you have a good stack of healing items, rifle ammo and have very high health, otherwise you should take a drink and go back for another run. If you're good to go, keep in mind that the Emma Grand and the 16 make this fight a complete joke, which I won while taking barely any damage. If you prefer non-cheese builds, you're watching the wrong channel. At the start of this video I promised to explain how to beat the SOB Purifier. You could watch my previous video where I show the entire fight, but if you prefer the abridged version, the strategy simply involves placing tripping hazards at your starting location on the current floor. After this make sure you have either an Emma Grand or a 16 and have at least 80 rifle ammo. It's important that you start the fight on floor 3 so you can stash extra supplies in the courier box and try to escape if things go wrong. If you place the tripping hazards correctly, the SOB should have crippled legs and possibly a crippled groin which will make him take 50% more damage. When you finally engage him, bear in mind you need to keep him as far away as possible while going for continuous headshots. Since he has 600 HP, he'll probably use up almost all of your ammo by the the time he goes down. This isn't a major problem because his little mini uses rifle ammo which you should be able to restock most of it after the fight. Ironically I would rate little mini as one of the worst weapons in the game in terms of ammo efficiency and viability at ranges that further than a few meters. That said it's amazingly fun to just spray random bullets at weaker enemies and feel like a total badass. If you've reached this point you're probably good enough to beat cooler CA1 and see the rest of the game. I'm the Random Nonsense Merchant and this concludes my beginner's guide to Wasted, a post-apocalyptic pub crawler.